What's up, Spice Warriors? It's Dune Bro, and today I'm going to be breaking down House Vernius of Ix, the brand new faction for Dune Spice Wars. This is DLC that you can download on Steam right now. It's about 12 US dollars, and I'm going to be breaking down all the unique things about this faction. I just got done playing a multiplayer game with them, and we're going to go through, through everything from developments to all their military units, and I'm going to be showing you one of the most OP things about them in this video. If you're into Dune, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Leave me some comments below. Give me a thumbs up. It all helps me out what I do. And you can also join my Discord, link in the description, and grab yourself the Dune Roll and come talk with Spice Warriors just like yourself. Let's dig into this. The very first thing we're going to mention about this faction is the Nodal Network. It's a bit of a tongue twister. You this these these purple lines, this is called the Nodal Network. And you build neural nodes to make it work. Say that 10 times. Neural network nodal nodes. I already said it wrong. <laughs> so what does this do? How does it work? Let's talk about it. So say you're going to take your first village, right? It will be the spice village like usual. And you'll see your, your buildings options. The only unique building that they have is this one. This is called the neural node. You can connect the region to the nodal network. Okay, and can only be built in villages where exactly one neighbor is connected directly to the network. Now notice it does cost three land strat, which is a little weird. Usually things don't cost land strat standing. That's your government standing, right? So if you get too low on land strat, it's going to have some negative impacts. But if we look at this neural network, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to tether your drones in the region. Um, and it's also going to make your village buildings require one less water. Now you might be wondering, well, what is tethering? Well, if I can lock that, there you can see it. Tethering is how you buff your military. So you don't have a... their, their military is kind of paper-like, to be honest. But you use a series of buffs to make them stronger. So if you look at this, you get additional attack speed per each knowledge that you have. So. You're teching up, getting a lot of knowledge, and then if you've got units, your drones specifically tethered next to this neural network, it's really going to buff them up. So all that stacks up. I know it's a lot to think about, but just remember, you want to build these networks, and it's going to buff up your drones in the region. Um, now, for an exa example for building, you see how I have it here, uh, and I have one here. I I could not build a network in this uh in this uh, region because there's it's touching two of them. In fact, it'd be touching three of them. <laughs> Four of them now I have it. So you can only do it there. And it's kind of similar to how the Harkonnens, you know, how you have to like have max uh, militia to make sure you max out your eco. It's the same thing with the neural network. So for this region, you see how I don't have it. Uh, I have 50% less resource production. So because of that, you want to you want to build kind of long like. So in this game, I actually went from here all the way up to here at one point. I had a really long uh, network, and that's going to be how you optimize the best. And I also was considering. I haven't tried it out yet, but perhaps you want to save villages like this at the beginning for for doing some pillaging, because um, you're going to need a lot of that gold, specifically the Solari, right? To by your harvesters. Now, you'll notice in your villages that there is not an... Well, let's pick one that's got an open slot on it. There is not an option to build a, a harvest, uh, like a refinery, right? So similar to the Fremen, your harvesters are going to be trained at your main base. And look at their cost. 700 Solari. That is a ton of resources. Particularly for the beginning of the game, right? But you... They don't get detected by sandworms because they're drones. They fly. You tether them uh, with the, with your network, and you can go to neutral spice fields as well. So very similar to the the Fremen, I can send them out across the map to get spice in regions where I don't control. You see, I have one actually out here right now. Now he's not gathering because this pesky Fremen, but you get the point. Not only that, you don't use manpower to level these things up to gather more. You use batteries, fuel cells. So your production goes up by adding plus one fuel cell. You can, of course, uh, research and get up to four fuel cells. So that's going to be how you do your harvesting. Um, but early on, you know, obviously you're going to take your first district. You're going to get your neural node going. And then maybe think about going to one over here or 
go to a, a region like this where it's not going to be like I took this region second and I regretted it because I couldn't get the network going. But that's essentially how that nodal network is going to work for the most part. Key things to know if you want your full output for your village, you want to have the uh, new, the the nodal network in there and if you want to buff your drones up you're going to want to have them you know fighting near this network okay let's get into the faction bonuses so if you look in here you can see the summary let's talk a few through a few of these so we talked about the spice fields that you get your combine harvesters they can take neutral ones etc we've talked about being tethered truce now, this is a very interesting uh, diplomacy decision. Factions that are in truce get the effects of unresearched development that have been researched by House Vernius. Now, what does that mean? That means if I'm allied with, or if I'm in truce with Fremen like I am right now, he currently is getting the benefits of everything that I have researched. Now, that's a crazy thing, right? Because Truces in FFAs, I don't think of them as like being an ally, right? You might use that in a 2v2, but I don't want to necessarily like super duper help people most of the time in free-for-alls, right? I usually just trying to, you know, keep them from not hurting me, right? So that's something you really need to consider before you make these truces is they are going to benefit from your, your, uh, from your developments. But you'll see when I do go into the developments, there's a few bonuses that you get by being in a truce. So it's a little bit of give and take, but a nonetheless, a very interesting diplomacy uh, decision you have to make very early on. Mixed asphalt districts are split to give district bonuses. Now this is in reference to the developments at your main base. So let's talk about this asphalt because when I saw this in the announcement, I was like, how the heck is this thing gonna work? So let's check this out. So you see, you have all of the squares that you can uh, build your developments in. You get economic ones, military ones, uh, statecraft, etc. Right? Now, typically in other factions, you have like singular blocks, like a block of one, a block of two, and a block of three. And like if you wanted this level three bonus, you had to have all three filled up. Or if you wanted a level one bonus, you just wanted one of the singletons. How this will work is the second I build one of these, like here, for example, if you build one military, it's going to give you that level one military bonus. Now, if I build a second military one in this square, I will lose that level one bonus and it becomes the level two bonus. You see how I have two level twos right now for the eco? Um, and then for the level three, you can see here if I put one, two, three, it's gonna do that. This one's disabled specifically because one of the techs, one of my special abilities I use in developments, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But just know that's how it works, is that you can stack them. It's kind of a cool way to play this. There is a counselor that allows you to remove them for free or even build two at a time so you can change this up. But just notice it's very different from all of the other factions. So that's the S Vault. It looks complicated, but really it's it's almost simpler than the other ones, I would say. It takes a little bit of the stress about where do you put them. It doesn't really matter. You can just start with whatever one you want and then you know change it up as you go. Okay, so that is the S fault. And then we talked about villages not connected to the nodal network. Uh, they're going to suffer 50% less resource production. So know that that's going to be a thing. When you hit 5k hegemony threshold, it's going to unlock can file a patent on research developments that no other factions have researched. We'll talk about that in a second. And you can research one development without having research the requirement i kind of consider that kind of like a wild card so i'll show you what this means so if i go here to my development screen uh the filing patent you can see here i'm going to spend 1k solari and i'm going to put it on something uh one of these developments and then each other faction will have to pay house vernius 500 solari to research this development and they can be filed on developments that only i have researched so far now one thing about this is I don't think it's very valuable. It's a lot of Solari. You're spending 1,000 Solari. You need at least two of the factions to come across this patent. Like if I put it here or whatever, two of them just to get my money back. And not to mention, it's probably most impactful in the early stages of the game when you're pretty strapped for cash. Not to mention the fact your harvesters, they cost 700 Solari. 
For these reasons, I'm not sure if filing patent is really worth it. It's really expensive. Let me know if you think differently in the comments. I think there could be some cases for it. I used it this game. It just didn't feel great, to be honest. But that's filing patent. And then we talked about that other ability can research one development without uh, reaching its requirement. So that means like right now, typically I'd have to get this and this in order to research wonders of the desert. But when I reach my 5k hegemony, I can say, you know what? I want to research this right now. And I can just skip all these and get this. Now, if I want to get this tech, I still have to get that and then that. But you can basically skip, uh, you know, skip straight, straight around the board, whatever, collect $100. But that's how the 5k uh, bonuses are going to work. And then we have our 10k hegemony bonuses. With this, you can obfuscate a single researched development. Okay, so obfuscate is one more unique thing here in the developments tree. Uh, you spend 20 uh, land thread to use this, so it's going to cost you some government standing. And it, what it will do is make it so nobody can use like the, everybody loses that access for example i used to hear this game so that means everybody loses this development now we, i was talking with chat and probably the most impactful place to use something like this could be down here on valuable trinkets because it would basically because this unlocks the crafts workshop as you can see if i obfuscated this nobody can use the craft workshop and there's nothing to do about it so that could be a cool way to use it. You could use it on one of your military techs, whatever you want, but obfuscate is essentially gonna delete a tech from the game. So maybe depending on what your strategy is, you might decide what developments you don't want your enemies to have. So that's obfuscate that you get towards the end. So you have kind of two unique development features that no other faction have. And then the last uh, unique ability here, each knowledge point increases the production of all resources by 0.1%. Now, one thing you should know about knowledge, it is the heart of this faction. They're, I think they play really well with you're trying to tech up, you're trying to do something like some uh, really research heavy strategy, perhaps going for an espionage route using uh, a lot of your techs to, to aid. Um, this knowledge is going to help you at Tenge Hegemony with just getting more resources. But across the board, knowledge is going to be buffing your troops. So let's take a look at the military roster of these guys. So you've got a lot of mechanical troops. You've got a fighting mech, you've got a railgun drone, a resource drone, etc. And if you look at this, uh, this tethered ability, it gives 0.5 attack speed per knowledge. So remember I mentioned this earlier, your troops aren't super strong. But if you are teching and getting a lot of knowledge and building those buildings, so you're getting plenty of knowledge, it's going to be giving your units additional attack speed when they're fighting within the, the tether of the neural network. So that's going to be how you're going to build and really stack up the military power of your units is going to be with knowledge on top of everything else you might be doing. Now, let's look through the the, the uh, unit roster now that we're talking about this. And I will say, I haven't figured all these out yet. Got a lot left to do exploring wise, but I'll, I'll share at least what I do know about them. So at the very beginning of the game, you've got these guys, okay? You've got the fighting mech, and this is going to be, you know, a drone, so it's going to cost fuel cells, and it's not going to attract Shai Halud, of course. Uh, does this one? Uh, no, they don't. None of the drones do, so uh, they're hovering machines, of course. Um, this is probably your most mainline, frontline infantry unit. I made the mistake of making a lot of these uh, sub soldiers and these these fight engineers and they're extraordinarily squishy so you're gonna want a lot of these uh, in kind of the front of your army sub soldiers they buff each other this now this is a humanoid uh, it will they buff you can get up to five max and you get five percent more damage per sub soldier so they stack as you add more of them so if you're gonna use these you probably want to get five of them is what I think. I used some of them early on, lost a lot of them, didn't love the unit personally in my first experience, but I'll give it more try. Now the railgun drone is a pretty cool one. It attacks at long range when tethered, so it gets a long range attack and ignores half of the enemy's yard armor. So a very cool unit, uh, kind of like an artillery-like unit if you're fighting within the tether. It'd be nice, especially of course defensively if you're fighting on your own territory, right? Uh, moving along, you've got the Resonance Drone. 
Ally drones at medium range gain electrostatic. And you look at this, non-mechanical uh, enemy units at close range lose 100 health. So this is going to be like a debuff on the enemy having this uh, resonance drone. And non-mechanical enemy, oh, oh, we already mentioned that one. Yep, there. So that's going to be the resonance drone. Um, I didn't make a lot of these. I'm not sure how powerful they really are. Um, you can't see the stats of them in this screen. I did have them up earlier, but we'll do another video where we break down, you know, hey, here's how you should use the military guide for these guys once I've had more time to try them out. Okay, now your elite unit, you're going to unlock, uh, I believe it's 5k hegemony now. I know they just changed the stat of that. I don't know if it's lower. I think that's the amount. I think it's 5k. Uh, the fight engineer. Now, this is a military unit. Um, if you look at this bad boy, uh, he is not a drone. It is a ranged unit, though. It is 5k. Okay, thank you. Um, and it has 50% less fit attack speed while engaged in melee. So, because it's a ranged unit. So, you're going to want these, but like I mentioned earlier, you want fighting mechs or at least these suboid soldiers in the front line because they are ranged units. You need to have something tanking for them. They gain experience from kills of your drones at medium range. So you want drones paired with them, and the Vernius drones gain engineered experience for each experience level of the best fight engineer at medium range. It's kind of confusing, but long and short of it is you want these guys fighting together. They're going to supplement. They're going to they're help each other out. And then they can have a toggle or repair station to heal the drones. And this is a pretty cool ability. You can have several of these, right? Healing and be, uh, I've been told rumor that you can out heal the main base. If you've got enough of these healing while your drones are attacking. So it might be a fun way to try that out. Go give it a try. Let me know if that works for you. Um, but yeah, you're going to, you're not going to want to make just fight engineers. They aren't like a frontline, uh, uh, you know, unit that you might use for Atreides or, uh, you know, the Fedekin from the Fremen or whatever. It's not going to be like that. Okay. Now, I did not get a chance this game to try out their uh, flying units. I just was so busy with all this stuff. But you've got the uh, Spirit, which is going to be your Tier 1 air. Um, it is always tethered. Gets stealth inside the territory if the faction is truce. So that's going to be um, your kind of fighter, fighter flight unit. And then you've got the uh, your, your, you know, your mothership, the main battleship, right? Uh, it's always tethered. Allied units at long range are tethered. So you're gonna, this is going to be a way so you can move out on the map, get tethering outside of the reaches of your base. And, of course, it's uh, a main battleship. So it's going to, you know, just be a, a powerhouse in itself. Um, now, the last unit you see down here, I mean, assassins are always there if you research them with factions, is this is my hero which is new to Dune. Now, I will be doing guide specifically on just heroes, so we'll go through all of them. You can only unlock one per game. You get two to choose from uh, once you hit 10K hegemony, and you train, uh, you get the first one for free, but if you lose them, you gotta pay a lot of resources to get them back. As you can see here, Solari, uh, Lancer ad standing, uh, and it takes a long time to train back, and you can get them back. So in this, this case, I chose uh, Nua, and uh, she's buffing my drones, has some different abilities to buff the drones. But the heroes, of course, the newest thing in this uh, latest uh, latest patch. Um, I'm, chat's telling me that the mothership has an active ability to teleport to a neural node. So that is freaking awesome. So I, I can't wait to try that out. Um, you know, maybe I'll give you a better look at these guys later on. Okay, so those are all the units of this faction. Let's talk about maybe one of the strongest things hidden here in the espionage tab or what? Yeah, that's what they call it. So check this out. Now there is a UI overhaul on this, so don't be alarmed. This is the espionage tab you're used to seeing and it's making me do a vote here. Get rid of that. Okay. Um, what are these things? These are analytical machines. Now you can't see it in the screen right now because I'm at the end game state. But you can buy these analytical machines. They cost uh, Solari, and look at their abilities though. This agent produces 100% more resources. Does not, it does not count for information levels, so that's the only downside to it. 
Um, but it, and it does not count uh, in the max agents count. So I actually ended up with more agents than I had slots at one point to put them. And there's no limit to how fast you buy these. Like if you're just rolling in Solari, you can buy all of these. I bought them and instantly filled up my chome. So I was just like paying back my Solari as soon as possible, stacking up and filling all of these slots. And I think that is a super cool thing with the way this uh, faction plays. Like I mentioned earlier, you can go development heavy, but you're going to be able to really lean into you know, the espionage uh, elements. And I think that's really, really cool. Now, I mentioned the fact that it doesn't count towards your information levels. Uh, well, you can kind of counteract that with one of these counselors I chose here. Information levels required for spying missions are lowered by one. So that's here with Tessia Vernius. I'll show you the other one I chose for this game. Uh, this one gave me max influence per knowledge. Another bonus from knowledge. Um, but these drones are so cool. And the fact that you can just buy them, like put them in these slots uh, immediately. And it's giving you 100% more of the resource. That is a massive, uh, you know, faction ability that no other faction has. You can just really, really quickly uh, be working on your espionage. So that's going to be uh, those analytical machines. And then I want to show you the unique missions that are available. Okay, now one cool thing, you can click this button to just see the ones that are currently available. So there's a lot of these a lot of times. It can be a little overwhelming. If you just click this, it'll show the ones that you're actually eligible for at the time. But let's look at the unique ones, which are signified by this little purple icon. So this one, ambient connection. Allied mechanical units are tethered remotely. So as we mentioned, tethering is going to be helping your army. If you're not inside your base, it's not going to be helping you. So you can use this in the field and it is going to buff your army, right? Tethering up those drones. Empirical data plus one knowledge per units of any faction in combat in the region. Now, at first I read this and I was like, now, hold on a second. Like, that's great and all, but like that costs 200 Intel, 200 Solari. Is that worth it just for a little bit of knowledge for some time? This has a double use. Remember, knowledge is going to buff your tethered units, right? For your drones and everything. So say you're getting attacked in one of your regions where you're tethered already. You can use this. You're going to get, a, you know, a short burst of knowledge and research, right? And it's going to buff your army. As we mentioned, your units are a little bit paper-like. You're going to want buffs like this for them. So for that reason, I think it's a very interesting uh, ability. You could also, you know, use it on maybe you got two in two enemies fighting and you're not even involved. You can use that in that region and you'll start getting some knowledge. So uh, some different options, a very unique uh, mission to use nonetheless. Uh, and then the final one down here is hidden back door. Enemy mechanical units cannot be controlled and attack their allies. So basically renders uh, their mechanical units useless and they're going to start attacking each other. So that is going to be, uh, you know, a big, uh, it could be really impactful in a battle where there's a lot of mechanical units. And with that, folks, that's going to be my beginner's uh, intro guide to House Vernius of Ix. Of course, I'm just starting to dig into them, so you should be on the lookout. I'll have some playthroughs. I'll have some other guides. I'll break down some smaller aspects of this faction in a little bit more detail as we get more experience with them. I hope you enjoyed this guide. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit me with a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. And tune in for one of my Twitch streams. I'm playing over on Twitch, uh, playing a little bit of Dune. And uh, links in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.